means same and trans means across from. So when we say that something acts in cis versus in trans, we're referring to whether that something is regulating or acting upon the same molecule that it's part of or a separate molecule. It helps to put some examples to things. And so the classic examples you're gonna see are things like transcription factor binding sites, which would be cis regulatory elements being bound by transcription factors. So proteins that come and bind to those sequences, those transcription factors would be acting in trans, they'd be trans regulatory elements binding to those regulatory sites, say, in the region before a gene, so in like the promoter region, and helping recruit RNA polymerase or bring in repressors that are actually going to shut down the production of messenger RNA from the gene. You can have the same sorts of cis regulatory sites, the same sequences for this, a certain transcription factor in front of lots of different genes and therefore simultaneously control related genes. You can also have cis-acting regulatory elements and trans-acting regulatory elements at the messenger RNA level. And so say microRNAs. MicroRNAs are short RNAs that are bound by a protein called Argonaut. Argonaut then goes and binds to sequences in messenger RNAs that are complementary to that small RNA. And it then shuts down the production of protein from those messenger RNAs. Different messenger RNAs can have binding sites for multiple microRNAs, and the same microRNA can have binding sites in multiple different messenger RNAs. And so the binding sites would be cis-acting elements, and the microRNAs would be trans-acting elements. Another great example is selenocysteine incorporation. Selenocysteine is a rare amino acid, but it's important in some proteins. And the way that it's incorporated into proteins is actually by taking over the stop coding on UGA and incorporating a selenocysteine instead. Normally, when you reach a UGA, a release factor comes and cuts off the grown peptide to release the protein that was made. When you have a protein that contains selenocysteine, however, you need to tell the ribosome, hey, don't stick in a release factor, instead stick in a selenocysteine. The way that we're gonna do this is by keeping the selenocysteine nearby so it can sneak in when the ribosome pauses at that UGA codon. To do this, we're gonna have factors that act both in cis and in trans. The in cis part, so on the same strand, is going to be in the three prime UTR, the untranslated region at the end of the messenger RNA for selenocysteine containing proteins. You have this kind of loopy region that serves as a binding site for trans factors that come in such as elongation factor and the tRNA containing the selenocysteine linked to it. It's going to be held on that cis regulatory element and then when the ribosome reaches that UGA, it can kind of sneak that tRNA in 